Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about driving on ice and more about winter driving. I had a couple of comments last week that I went a little fast or I just gave a lot of information in a very short period of time. So what we're going to do is go in a little bit more depth and talk specifically about one aspect of winter driving, which is going to be driving on ice. Now, the other thing you might have noticed, uh, a couple of my recent videos were a little bit different in format and whatnot. <laughs> Yes, I finally taken the challenge and taken the plunge and upgraded to Final Cut Pro. So that's been a bit more interesting in terms of making videos. So, uh, yes, so the different format and just bear with me while I'm learning the new software and whatnot. So Wilfred is here and watched your videos and passed my test. Congratulations. That is really awesome. Uh, Wilfred, where are you in the world? Where did you pass your test? And for those of you joining us now, please uh, just tell us where you are in the world, what class of license you are going for. And for those of you watching on the replay as well, leave a comment down in the comment section. I'll get back to you and we can talk about uh, what kind of vehicle you're driving, what kind of what class of license you're going for and where in the world you are. And uh, as well, for those of you watching, you can tell me uh, about your winter driving skill and how prepared you feel for winter time? Do you feel that your skills are up to the task of meeting winter and driving in the snow and ice and those types of things? CDO, you are most welcome. So that's what we're doing tonight. We're gonna to talk about winter driving. So leave a comment down in the comment section if you like what you see here. Hit that thumbs up button as well and be sure to subscribe. So, <laughs> uh, Wilfred Hollywood, AKA the most brutal DMV, yes. Uh, they are a bit more um, exact, I would say, in California there. So, hi, Anna. How are you tonight? So, yes, and as well, um, what else was I going to say? Super Chat is also available if you, <laughs> if you want to make a donation. That's always great. Okay. M Emily. Emily, that's clever. Las Vegas, BC. Going for Class A. Awesome. So, you're going for Tractor Trailer. Nabil, I failed my test because of the signals and left intersection a solid green. Okay, I'm, I would need a little bit more information to comment on that, Nabil. I'm sorry to hear about your unsuccessful attempt, but for sure you're going to get it the next time. And I do encourage you to uh, take a lesson with a driving instructor and get them to do a mock road test with you. That way they can assess your skills and tell you uh, what might need a bit more work before you go for a road test. Emily is in Nevada. Excellent. Nevada is one of the only states that I have not, one of the two states actually have not been in. I haven't been in Utah either, but I did drive truck in all of the other states, all of the other uh, states rather. So, uh, Emily, where are you in, in terms of uh, your course for your tractor trailer are you going you are obviously i suspect going to a driving school where whereabouts are you in the duration of the course like are you have you been in the truck yet uh nabil in regina yes in saskatchewan we've talked before nabil about this so i think you were having some challenges with that have you checked out the playlist on how to turn left nabil just leave me a comment on that there and uh, we can talk about that a little bit, a bit more uh lewis how are you how is the weather in toronto my mom's visiting from ontario she's uh from wingham so she's been here for the last couple of weeks and she's going home next uh this coming week <laughs> actually i can't believe how fast three weeks has gone uh anna you are most welcome <laughs> that's funny feel comfortable in taking uh passengers but not sure how the passengers are going to feel uh that reminds me of that story about uh grandpa you know i want to die in my sleep like grandpa not like the six other screaming people in the car <laughs> uh and sam is here jericho arroyo rumble rumble that's sam he is with auto rookie driving school in the bronx in new york he is a driving instructor and if anybody any of you are in new york and are going to be taking driving lessons certainly look sam up he's great Javier from texas whereabouts are you in texas Javier? Uh, you didn't take a road test in uh, our a lesson with a driving instructor, Nabil. That is certainly one thing that I encourage you to do is before you go for your road test, at least take one driving lesson with a driving instructor. Because keep in mind, 
driving instructors teach people how to pass a road test every day and they can assess your skills and a lot of times that will help you to be pre prepared that you're in fact going to uh, be successful on your road test tank girl that is an awesome username i did actually see the movie and i tease my friend about it every time i go and see him in montreal about taking me to see tank girl uh, i failed my ohio road exam a few months ago and really need to pass it next year with the winter weather around the corner i'm a bit worried uh, actually tank girl i'm just going to say that taking your road test in the winter time is actually a little bit less exact than what it is in the summertime because you don't have to because you can't see the road markings if there's snow on the ground and those types of things uh they're a little bit more there's a bit more discretion involved and definitely have a look at the video here on the channel and Corey will actually dig that up for you on taking a road passing a road test in the winter time with snow on the ground and uh what well, that's one of the things i talk about that sometimes it's a little bit easier because um driving examiners don't want you to get the vehicle stuck because uh they <laughs> they're reluctant to push the car out of snow banks for some reason so they don't want you to get in there in the snow and whatnot okay i hope uh i ought to i don't think i'm saying that right apologize and thanks for the videos and being pulled over help me stay calm <laughs> you got pulled over on thanksgiving and barely lucked out that i remembered to renew my per permit that's awesome so uh did you end up getting a ticket then or did you just get pulled over and they gave you a warning just let me know in the comments there uh lewis i am good thanks the weather is cold as always at this time of year yes it is cold and it always feels colder because there isn't snow on the ground and I ought to, I ought to, yeah, I think that's what it is, is from Washington State there in the Northwest. That's awesome. Thankfully, only a warning. Awesome. Yeah, I've been pulled over quite a number of times and only gotten a warning, particularly when I was driving truck. I can't say that I was the best driver when I was driving truck. It was after my career as a truck driver that I actually became a driving instructor and realized that um, yeah some of the things I needed to do so that was really great that you actually did watch that video before uh, you got pulled over so Emily in uh, Nevada there is going six weeks now so uh, Emily what kind of transmission are you operating in the truck that you're driving are you is it a 10 speed 13 15 18 what are you working on there how's and how is the shifting going and whatnot are you having any challenges uh, with your course um, <laughs> yes I I have seen the movie it was a long time ago but yes I have seen it and you are most welcome about the advice Anila okay so Anila what are the rules for entering into a highway you're talking about merging onto a freeway Anila are you okay Anne Marie I'm from Nanaimo taking my class one course now that's awesome just pass my air brakes with flying colors to watch your air brake videos and totally learn tons from them. Thank you. You are most welcome, Anne Marie. And which 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 driving school are you with there in Nanaimo, Anne Marie? If I mean, if you don't mind me asking, you don't have to say uh, if you don't want to. Tank girl. Oh, Emily, you're working with a ten speed. Awesome. Uh, are you having any challenges, Emily, with turning and pre trip or anything like that? It's all going according to plan. Is it all working out for you? all right all right so everybody's good everybody's working on everybody's kind of it's been a real lull in the channel and people watching videos and those sorts of things because of american thanksgiving i've noticed that a lot of people have been away and been on holidays and that's really great or because i'm not going to say that they were away shopping for um <laughs> black friday <laughs> uh Shushma, thank you so much for that. Still learning the modules, going to range after 10 weeks. That's great. Uh, Jahani, tuning in from Jamaica. Good evening. That is awesome. In from Jamaica. Layla, I failed my test because of a red signal and a right turn, but it was safe. Mm, yeah, unfortunately, examiners have a fair bit of discretion about that, Layla, whether your turning is safe or not, or you're in a red light or those types of things. So, yeah. Anne Marie, thank you for sharing the website around. That's really great. I'm hoping that helps other people out. Yes, uh, merging the highway rules. Yes, so essentially, Anila, you have to 
Come down on the on-ramp, get out onto the acceleration lane. When you get on the acceleration lane, get the vehicle up to the speed of the flow of traffic. So match the speed as you're coming out, you're picking your spot, you're looking for the, the vehicles there. Make sure you get your signal on early, well back on the acceleration lane. And uh, the communicating to other traffic that you're actually going to merge out. I mean, the position of your vehicle on the acceleration lane does tell them that, but you need to signal early because the flashing light gets their attention. So communicate, pick your spot, hold your course, and then stay on as long as you can to get it up to the flow of traffic, the speed of traffic, which is 65 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. Uh, it'd probably be 100 kilometers an hour there in, in Ontario. And then um, just merge over, okay? It's kind of one of those things. It's like a hockey stop. You just got to do it and merge over. Uh, Lily Trucker just coming in. Hi, Lily. How are you tonight? Okay. So thank you again. Thank you, Anne-Marie, for suggesting my stuff to other people to help them. Uh, you're in Canada. Yes, Corey is in Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> Winterpeg, as we co commonly referred to it. Uh, Sushma, good luck on your road test on Tuesday. Yes, and then the license. Yes, so yes, don't rely on the videos here. The videos do show you how to learn how to drive. But they don't teach you how to drive because you have to actually get in a vehicle and you have to practice and you have to do the skills that I show you and whatnot. I do give you the information that will help you to be successful, but the, you certainly can't learn how to drive from these videos. You, I, you really need somebody sitting in the vehicle with you. And remember that learning how to drive and learning how to drive for the purposes of passing a road test are two very different animals. Okay, so we're just going to switch over to the PowerPoint presentation here and talk a little bit more about winter driving and talk about specifically driving on ice, which is probably people's, uh, <laughs> Corey's showing us the rest of the other things. Amber, how are you? Okay, uh, so there we go. So PowerPoint, yes, PowerPoint. There we go, driving on ice. And what else are we going to do here? Do this. All right. Okay, so driving on ice. My name is Rick August. For those of you who haven't seen too many of my videos, I do have a PhD in traffic. It's kind of historical traffic. Uh, for those that you don't know, I looked at traffic between uh, 1890 and 1930 and the transition from horse-drawn traffic to motor traffic and road speeds increased 500 percent between 1890 and 1930 they went from five miles an hour to six miles an hour and in relative terms to what we're talking about today that would be like saying that in 2060 we're all going to be driving around cities at 250 kilometers an hour or what's that in about 160 miles an hour which is kind of most of us would say that's ludicrous but that's what happened in the 40 years between 1890 and 1930 and what I did was looked at the impact that increased road speed had on policing and law and how policing and law worked to control the roads and uh, tried to uphold what's called order maintenance is the biggest task that police do is trying to control the actions of people and I argued that all of the laws and policing changes in policing really moved to accommodate higher road speeds on the roadways and not in fact, uphold order maintenance, although there was a whole social movement that went along with that as cars monopolize roadways. So tonight what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about driving on ice and snow, and uh, we're going to talk about specifically driving on ice when it gets slippery in the winter time. And the first thing we're going to talk about uh, here in terms of driving on ice is types of ice. There's ground ice, freezing rain, and ice that's created by traffic and weather. So basically ice is on the, on the roadway that forms there because you have water or precipitation on the roadway and then it freezes and it becomes ice. And freezing rain is precipitation that falls from the atmosphere and it's warm in the atmosphere. And the surfaces on the ground or the trees and the cars and buildings and whatnot are all cold. So the rain actually freezes on the surface and that's where you get those really tremendous ice storms and those types of things where things break, structures break, uh, electrical uh, hydro towers and those types of things all break. So then there's uh, ice that's created by traffic, especially at intersections when vehicles come up and they hit their brakes and they're sliding up in the intersection and they put pressure on the, on the ice and they melt it a little bit 
and that there's a layer of water on top of the ice and that freezes because it's cold outside so you will get uh, ice that way as well so those are different ways that ice will form on the roadways uh, where will you find ice because one of the things that uh, oftentimes uh, media and other places will talk about is they'll talk about black ice well i don't subscribe to black ice because i know where ice is going to be found when it is cold and the temperature is near freezing uh, it's going to form on bridges and overpasses first and the reason it freezes on bridges and overpasses first is because it's cold on both sides of the structure underneath and above the other place that you're going to find ice is in low-lying areas and roadways so you're going to find ice anywhere in the roadway lies in shadow along hills and buildings and those types of things you're going to find ice at high elevations particularly here in the mountains uh, where the clouds are sitting down on the mountains and you drive up through the cloud because remember clouds are precipitation that precipitation touches the roadway and then it freezes and forms ice on the roadway and then roadways that run near bodies of water there's also going to be ice so those are some of the places where you will find ice when the temperature dips to zero degrees celsius or 36 degrees fahrenheit as it does here in North America or in the United States as it does in the fall that's what I was going to say <laughs> not the other thing so stopping distance it takes you approximately 10 times farther to stop on ice particularly if there's a layer of water on the ice or the temperature is around freezing which is going to cause water on top of the ice uh, you need to work the primary controls very carefully and you need to um, break early steer early so that you can know what, what the conditions of the roadway are whether it's slippery or whether you're going to get traction and those kinds of things and you want to separate out the use of the brake and the steering wheel you want to brake first and then steer not try and steer and brake simultaneously as oftentimes we do in the summertime so that's one of the other things you want to do and again we've talked about space management in the past you leave yourself an out you always want to have some place to drive into because as I talked about in the recent uh, crash analysis video uh, it's faster to drive out of an emergency situation or around an emergency situation than it is to break. And oftentimes we're not going to get the vehicle stopped. However, to be able to steer around an emergency situation, you need some place in which to drive into. Aim high in your steering. So that means look far down the road and being look when you're looking far down the road and not looking at the end of the hood as well. For those of you learning how to drive and center a vehicle in the laneway, regardless of whether it's a passenger vehicle or tractor trailer, is one of the things as driving structures that we tell students is to look farther down the road you need to communicate with other road users your intention if you're going to come to a stop or those types of things you want to use your lights the position of your vehicle appropriate hand gestures eye contact all of that will communicate to other road users and your horn as well but unfortunately most of the time we honk our horn that's an aggressive movement with other road users get the big picture so you're looking at oncoming traffic you're looking at the traffic that you're driving in the lane with uh, out onto the sidewalks and uh, intersections and you're looking at the junctions and merge lanes and all those types of things so get the big picture of traffic and make sure they see you the other road users if somebody is tailgating you and you're trying to come to a stop on ice or snow uh, you certainly want to look in the mirror and make sure that the people behind you are coming to a stop before you actually put on the brakes and you actually might to communicate you might want to just tap your brakes to know whether the traffic behind you is coming to a stop Defensive braking, drive for the conditions on the roadway. Okay, know that the speed limits are for ideal conditions on the roadway. <laughs> yes, and check your mirror, tap your brakes. If somebody is tailgating you, as I said, tap your brakes. The flashing of the light behind them will get their attention. Do most of your braking when you're driving on ice or it is slippery conditions. Do most of your braking before you get to where you want to stop and then creep up to where you actually want to stop the other thing too is for new drivers before you come to a complete stop release the brakes allow the body of the vehicle to rest back over the chassis and then reapply the brakes and come to a complete stop that way you're not going to jolt your passengers and those types of things all right so what is the weather report outside what is the temperature and oftentimes if the temperature plummets to you know 20 degrees fahrenheit or it plummets to minus 10 or minus 15 degrees media reports are oh my god it's snowing outside and it's so terrible and we're all going to die oh my god is <laughs> actually when the temperature is around zero uh that's when you should be the most worried because when the temperature is around zero there's going to be ice in that's going to be sporadic it's not going to be able to be seen because they're going to label it as black ice but there is going to be ice on bridges and overpasses low-lying areas areas lying in shadow low elevations and at very high elevations 
So know that when the temperature is around zero. And also note, note that if you get radical temperature changes in the wintertime, so the temperature goes from minus 30 up to minus 15, it's also gonna make the road surface more slippery as well. And in the mountains here, uh, we have something called hard pack, where salt only works down to about minus six or minus seven, and then salt is ineffective after that point, and that's why they put sand on the roadways. And in the mountain areas, a lot of time we get hard pack, we get a big layer, thick layer, could be four, six, 10, 12 inches of hard pack snow on top of the roadway. And that's actually what the road surface is in the wintertime, you're driving on that hard pack. So know that if the temperature does in fact get up around zero, that that hard pack is going to be quite slippery. All right, intersections are going to be your biggest challenge in the wintertime. Most 40% of crashes occur at intersections. Intersections become slippery because the cars come up, they break and they slide. Uh, it melts that pressure and heat from the friction melts the top of the layer of ice and there's a layer of water on top of it. Think of it like an ice hockey rink where the Zamboni floods the ice. After the ice is flooded, the water lubricates the top of the ice and that's when it is most slippery. The other analogy is, is when you take ice cubes out of the freezer, for the first couple of minutes, the ice cubes are sticky because they're still cold, but you leave them there for 30 seconds or 45 seconds and they become very slippery. And the reason for that is because the ice cubes begin to melt, there's a layer of water on them and they go zinging across the top of the counter. So break early and approach it to crawl. Make sure you test out the, the road surface and those types of things. And again, same thing as what we talked about last week in terms of braking, uh, steering and accelerating in the wintertime when conditions are slippery. Uh, overuse of the primary controls, steering, braking and accelerating are all gonna potentially cause you to lose control. So know that as well and nice, easy, gentle maneuvers of the primary controls and know that for the purposes of steering you don't need much more than a quarter of a turn to even go around a corner you need very little on the steering wheel in order to get the vehicle to move for you skid control and again just to reiterate this point as well drive for the conditions of the road as i said posted speed limit is under ideal conditions dry roads in the summertime and clear daylight in the wintertime it is not <laughs> recommended that you drive the speed limit if there's snow or ice or it's lighting conditions especially now in the winter time when it gets dark at three or four o'clock in the afternoon if you do lose control of the vehicle steer in the direction that you wish to go look for your out and don't give up don't ever give up as i said in the crash analysis video the other day do not give up wear your seat belt because your seat belt keeps you in the seat in the event of an emergency situation because if you're thrown out of your driver's seat it's pretty tough to operate the vehicle all right, and if a crash is imminent and you have the choice between something big and something small, head for something small, like a hedge or a fence or something like that, as opposed to a tractor trailer. As well, try and reduce your speed as much as possible. Get your foot on the brake pedal and lock that sucker up. And if you got uh, ABS brakes, which most passenger vehicles now are going to have, uh, you're gonna have to post off the steering wheel. So grab a hold of the steering wheel with both hands and pull down and, and hold that brake pedal down as hard as you can to try and reduce as much speed. And the last point of if you're actually if a if a crash is imminent, try and get it off on an angle. Don't try and hit what you're gonna hit on square on, okay? Because that's gonna reduce the impact of the crash as well. So in conclusion, ice, there's different kinds of ice, freezing rain, ice that's on the roadways that's already there, that's snow that's been compacted by cars and those types of things. Rain, uh, ice is going to be more slippery uh, when it, the temperature is around freezing. Very deft control of the vehicle. So nice, easy, gentle use of the steering wheel and the primary controls because all of that potentially could cause you to lose control. Most important, like I say all the time, increase your following distance when uh, the conditions of the roadway deteriorate and you know that you're on ice or you're driving on ice. Freezing rain is going to come down in the form of rain. It's gonna look like rain and only until you get out on the roadway and probably fall on your butt <laughs> are you gonna figure out that that rain is actually freezing on the surface and uh, that it is probably not prudent for you to be out driving. All right, skid control, look in the direction you wanna go. If a crash is imminent, uh, try and reduce your speed as much as possible. Uh, if you have a choice between something big and something small, aim for something small, and as well, try and reduce the speed by as much as possible. All right, so coming back here, here we go. There we go. Okay, and see what we got here. Okay, 
Samantha has a question. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah, okay. Naruto, perpendicular parking. Okay, reverse stall parking. Corey got that video up for you. Uh, Naruto, one of the things I'm going to say about uh, reverse our perpendicular parking rather is, is that try and park beside another vehicle because one of the, the thing about parking beside another vehicle is then that way you have a reference. If you're trying to look in the mirrors down at the lines on the parking lot, and especially now that we're coming into winter with snow and that sort of thing, you're not gonna be able to see those lines. So know that if you park beside another vehicle, it's going to be a lot easier for you to use that as a reference point. The other thing is, is that when you come up to park, you can see that other vehicle there and you can know whether that vehicle is straight in the space or not, and that way you can line your vehicle up, all right? So those are some tips for perpendicular parking. And the other thing about it is, is that as you're backing up, not the whole time that you're backing up, but just as a quick check, because you gotta put your hand over the passenger seat, depending on which side of the vehicle you're on, and then look out the back window, but every now and again, just look straight forward and see if the vehicle is straight when you're backing up. Okay, dank. Moon Pie, your videos helped me pass my road test first try. Keep doing what you do. Thank you so much, Dank. Uh, where are you that you passed your road test, Dank, there? <laughs> Lily, uh, I hate driving in the snow. No, fair enough, Lily. It's It can be a bit daunting, especially in a, in a tractor trailer or a big truck. Uh, you get on a bit of ice and snow and it starts to go. It's pretty tough to get it to recover. Okay. Imani, how to practice turning without driving. That's pretty tough. Uh, yeah, without actually being in a vehicle. Okay. Amber, how are you? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure if I should join online to learn more about the permit questions as I'm wondering what should I do over the situation. Okay, Samantha, are you talking about your learner's permit, like the knowledge test that you have to do? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, because if you're doing knowledge test questions for, the, for your permit, for your learner's permit, uh, there's practice driving test questions over at my website that are free. You can do those, okay? So what I suggest is that people ask me that about the learner's test, the knowledge test that they have to do. Do not read the driver's manual wherever you are in the world. Do not read that driver's manual cover to cover. The only thing that thing is good for is curing insomnia. It's terrible. It's been written by bureaucrats and it's dry as sawdust. So <laughs> what I suggest to you is, is find some practice driving test questions on the websites here on the internet. Do the practice driving test questions. Don't use the driving test questions as a gauge of your ability use them to find the gaps in your knowledge when you find the gaps in your knowledge then go back to the driving manual look up the sections in the driving manual that you don't know strengthen those skills go back and do the practice driving test questions and just kind of work back and forth between the book and the practice driving test questions because the practice driving test questions will actually teach you the information that you need to know for the purposes of passing a road test and as well the practice driving test questions will teach you how to read the questions and how to answer the questions because there is a specific skill set for answering practice uh, multiple choice questions for the purposes of a road test and that's where my tagline for the videos comes from pick the best answer not necessarily the right answer and just as an example of that if you're going through a four-way stop and that's the question on the test is, is who has the right of way to four-way stop and the, the choices are the biggest vehicle, the per first person to, the first vehicle to arrive, the vehicle on the right, or the vehicle in the intersection. Well, two of those four answers are actually right. The first person, the first vehicle to arrive, or the person on the right. Those are both right answers, but the best answer is the person in the intersection because if there's a vehicle in the intersection, you're not going to drive into the four-way stop intersection because there's somebody in there and they have the right of way. Okay, so know that. So pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer, and use the driving manual and the practice driving test questions to teach yourself how to pass the road test. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Renyi, how to reduce fatigue for long distance driving. Well, Renyi, you cannot reduce fatigue, but you can 
put strategies in place to continue to drive while you're tired. One of the things you can do is eat, eat carrots or eat rice cakes, something that's not, doesn't have a lot of carbs and fat and that sort of thing in it. Uh, one of the things I used to do is uh, when I was driving truck and I used to run long hours, I used to have a five, t five pound bag of carrots down beside the seat and I used to chew carrots while I was driving. That was one of the ways that it could stay awake for long distance driving. Uh, eating rice cakes also works. Um, obviously coffee, I'm a bit of an addict when it comes to coffee, which is probably not the best thing. <laughs> so that's one of the things you can do. Uh, the other thing, uh, where'd you go? Where'd you go, where'd you go, where'd you go? <laughs> All right, so those are a couple of strategies that you can put in place for long for long distance driving. The other thing that I suggest to you is is to uh, now, Renye, are you driving a commercial vehicle? Or are you driving a passenger vehicle? Because if you're driving a passenger vehicle, what I suggest is to get out of the vehicle every hour, maybe you know every couple of hours, and have a quick walk around. You know, go to the toilet and those types of things. In that way, that'll help the blood circulate. Even with a commercial vehicle, you can get it into a truck stop or. Uh, not a truck stop, but a rest area and those types of things that really helps as well. Uh, Renwer, weight is over. What weight are we talking about? Alvin, I just took my road test a month ago and I failed because the examiner told me that I ran a red light, which I don't have any idea how come I ran a red light. Yeah, uh, Alvin, did you go through a yellow light and it turned red while you were going through the intersection? That's always a possibility. Uh, because if you're in the intersection and the examiner looks up through the window and sees the light turning red, then they will deem that as a red light. Okay, uh, da -da -da -da. little trucker, thanks. You are most welcome. Lily trucker, I'm sorry. Uh, Samantha. Just wanted to know what was the best. Okay. Um, it, okay, well, I don't want to get too... Uh, personal on a thing what I suggest Samantha is send me an email rick at smartdrivetest.com uh, outline what anything that I can help you with in terms of a disability whether you have dyslexia or you have some sort of other learning disability that might you know cause problems with that put that in an email because I don't want to talk about it in a public forum but you know by all means and I'll be able to help you and do what I can to get you going uh, with that okay Uh, what do they test you on for class five and BC? Are there between class seven and class five? Do they take you to highway or something? Uh, it depends, Renwer, where you are taking your road test, uh, whether there's highway. Like if it's within proximity to the highway, then by all means, uh, they will take you out on the highway and see if you can drive on the highway. But if, if not, then they're not going to do that. So, okay. Sam from Rookie Auto Driving School is asking if there's anybody from New York here tonight. Raquel is from upstate New York. You are most welcome, Samantha. Okay, and we might actually run this short tonight because it doesn't seem like there's too many questions. Everybody's off on holidays because of American Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, where are you in upstate New York, Raquel? Yeah, Corey got the thing up for you. Uh, okay, Busy B. My instructor took me on the highway for the first time yesterday. It was really scary. Uh, okay, Busy B. Driving G2 exam. Busy B, remind me where you are in Ontario again, because I'm not sure whether that's true or not. Um, when you say highway, are you saying freeway, or are you talking about a highway, like a two-lane roadway with 100 kilometers an hour? Just let me know that. Okay, who's here? Rinwer is in Vancouver. Um, <laughs> Sam, turkey coma. Yeah, I think you're probably right for sure. Because uh, yeah, things. Samantha G is from Colorado. Excellent. That's awesome. Uh, Rinwer, they might take you on the highway. It depends where you are. If you're somewhere in. Um, I'm trying a blank one of the suburbs in Vancouver, but if you're near the Trans Canada Highway, they they might take you out on the Trans Canada Highway. It's it's up to the discretion of the driving examiner. If you're near a roadway, they might take you out on a freeway or not. Okay, especially in winter weather, automatic or standard transmission, driver or commuter computer judgment. Well, <laughs> you're asking somebody who drives a manual transmission JFSA. 
Uh, I personally like a manual transmission in the wintertime, and I certainly do not like computers intervening in my driving. <laughs> I know we have traction control and all those types of things. Okay. Savannah, what are the best winter tires? Uh, Savannah, I personally like Michelin's. But I will ask anybody who's on the live stream right now what kind of winter tires they prefer and what the reason is for their preference for winter tires. And anybody watching on the replay if you as well, if you could leave a comment down in the comment section about the brand of snow tires that you prefer, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, Savannah, I know here in British Columbia, we're allowed to run steel studded tires. And you know, those are probably <laughs> the best tires that you can get but there are downsides to steel studded snow tires and that one of the things is, is that they are really noisy uh they create a lot of road noise and they're they're hard on roadways so uh they may not be for everybody you can get really good snow tires that are not steel studded uh i personally my personal brand is michelin's i really like michelin's but there by all means there are other good tires out there uh yokohama bridgestone um Firestone, those are all good tires, so anybody. <laughs> now, that is very interesting that somebody has hacked my feed. Corey, can you take care of that person for me? Okay, Alvin. So JFSA 380, uh, Michelin or Goodyear company uses them interchangeably year-round, winter or summer. Change easily, run smoothly, great grip and long-lasting. There you go. So yeah, I like Michelin's. Um, there we go. Okay. Uh, they will take you at the airport parkway when you're taking your road test at Walkley. There you go. Okay, you guys seem to have that in control. Busy B, highway, 100 kilometers an hour, and I'm in Ottawa. Interesting, Busy B, that's where I did my driving instructor course with Chris at um, School of Motoring. Not um, Young Drivers, it's the other one. So anyway, yeah. They they might take you on the highway there, which I'm drawing a blank on highways tonight for some reason. I don't know what it is. It's not called the Queensway. What's the highway busy be in Ottawa? I'm <laughs> really having a brain cramp tonight, I'm telling you. Okay, that's not good. Okay, guys, I know you're stressing out about highways and those types of things, but just go out with your mentors and go out with the driving instructors and take some practice and drive on these highways because it's not terribly it they're safer than driving around on urban roads okay i just want to reassure you on that point because once you get it up to speed it's just a matter of pointing it down the road and you're going to be okay so know that I am very interested about how that person is hacking the, the feed. Okay. Queensway, yes. No, it's not the Queensway, is it, Busy B? Because you're laughing. <laughs> oh, yes, it's been a while. Okay, it is. Okay, so I just want to reassure you that driving on highways is safer, especially if it's a freeway or a multi lane highway. It's going to be safer than driving around town. There isn't as much stuff going on that you're going to have to deal with because it's monopolized by cars. I know that you're traveling at a much higher speed and it feels really. It, it, it feels daunting because you're moving at such a fast speed because you are because at 50 miles an hour you're moving at 18 meters per second at 100 kilometers an hour you're moving at 27 meters per second which is like 120 feet per second it's it's a it's a big distance okay so know that Samantha G okay Samantha you can find my email rick at smartdrivetest.com okay so that's my email Corey will type it down there in the comments for you so he just used your thumbnail and changed his nickname, I think. Okay, well, it's interesting because I want to know how these people are hacking the feed here. Uh,
All right. Uh, okay. So highway driving. So maybe what I'll do next week is I'll talk about highway driving and driving on highways because we seem to have some trepidation about that. And uh, some people who are concerned about that on terms of passing the road test. Now, just know that you're going to be okay on this. You just need to do a little bit of practice with your mentors and those types of things. It's a little bit different skill set, but for the most part, you're going to be okay. Uh, you're going to do well on your road test. So just carry on and do that. Okay. And because it's American Thanksgiving and as Sam said, everybody's in a turkey coma. I think we'll just leave it there for tonight. And uh, yeah, there we go. Thanks. <laughs> And if anybody has any questions, by all means, stick around. I'll stick around on the comments for a little bit here and answer any comments that anybody might have. And as well, uh, by all means, send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. I'll be more than happy to ha answer your questions. And what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna spend a little bit of time, about an hour on comments and try and get back to people that have asked me questions and those types of things. Hurrah! I passed my road test this past week. Thanks for all your content. You are most welcome. I'm really happy to, that you passed your road test and that's really great news. Thanks for letting us know there. Okay, so if anybody else has any questions, leave me a comment down in the comment. By all means, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to get back to you and help you out. And if you have passed the road test in the last week, congratulations on passing your road test. If you have a road test coming up this week, good luck on your road test and have fun with that. <laughs> and busy b there in ottawa is going to have the road test this tuesday good luck on that okay so good night to everybody thank you for your time thanks for showing up for those of you on the replay by all means leave me a comment uh talk to me about your best winter tires talk to me about what vehicle you're driving what class of license you're going for and that really helps out all of the new drivers working towards getting their license and for the veteran drivers trying to upgrade their skills. And thank you so much for all of your compliments and whatnot. And good luck in your road test. Remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.